Lieutenant Governor of Guam, uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. Good morning, LT. Hey, good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Chris. Uh, I guess How are you guys doing today? We're doing pretty good. Crazy busy. A lot of stuff uh, going on. So many things. I guess. Here too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know you. More stuff for you. Right. You guys uh, got a press conference, I think, in, in a little bit. Or right. Today. For, for GVB. But could we just first start with Tom Atta? What, what can Thanks you for reminding you? me about that because I kept in press conference. I'm like, you're right, at 11.30. <laughs> yeah, it's at 11.30. We'll see you there. Or, and not in person, uh, it's uh, a big one. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm leading it. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Chris, I interrupted you. No, it's fine. We're just trying to find out uh, what what happened with, uh, with Tom Atta. There was an abrupt resignation that uh, came down last night. That tells me something happened. Well, you know, I think people make choices, and I think the other thing is, you know, people reflect on what's going on in their lives during the COVID, and, you know, he's been an instrumental part of our team and still is a, a loyal friend and advisor. So... I just leave it at that, and he sent out his resignation, and, you know, he has spent decades serving the people, and I would just say that uh, I'm grateful that he was able to um, help get us elected and uh, help lead the airport during these uh, real precarious times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but usually when someone resigns, it's they say, you know, for health reasons or you know, whatever, but we didn't hear any of that. I mean, was he just, he just didn't want to work anymore? I mean, what you can't no, tell us why I, he just I suddenly did, quit and he, I, that I that did. resignation was effective immediately sabrina i would defer to him you know and mm -hmm. uh, i only that's the only thing i could say i just defer to him and you know know that and thank him for his service and count on his continued friendship mm -hmm. did you hear any anything at all lt about any type of complaint that may have been filed against him or i'm just asking no just, no you know. no nothing like that mm -hmm. i'm uh you know a2 was a surprise, but, you know, I mean, people make decisions. You know, I, I know that a lot of people are uh, thinking about the kinds of things that, uh, you know, they're, they focus in to improve their quality of their lives. You know, there's been some, there's been a, a lot of um, uh, hardships in his family the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it just and they're very personal, so I just mm -hmm. leave it at that. All right. I'm sorry, was it effective immediately? Uh, you know what? He resigns to the board, so okay. I believe it is effective immediately, yes. Any okay. word on a, a replacement? Is there anybody you'd like to see over there? Uh, I think that we'd still think about it, get the advice from the board. Uh, right now, the airport is in a critical time because of the dropping revenues. Right. and uh, Also, they're in the middle of uh, completing their uh, expansion. Uh, and dependent on this refresh of uh, the island and of tourism and trying to uh, get the confidence level up with our local population and then with our source markets to get this thing moving. And I think we're moving in a very um, uh, careful but uh, focused way to get to get that done so you know we're stable on all those fronts. So how do we... And part of that is going to be this refresh that we're doing um, you know, the Saturday, although right. there's some work going on already right. uh, around the island uh, to try and clean up. And uh, and I mentioned this in the last few weeks, catching up on some lost months we had when um, the island was pretty much at a standstill. Um, and I'm just grateful that uh, a lot of people in the private sector and uh, the employees from the agencies are volunteering on Saturday. And up to now, actually, even as we speak, the mayors are catching up on a lot of uh, the work on the roadsides. Um, and then, you know, there's also some infrastructure work we're doing. We're uh, re recovering our community. And uh, I don't know if you're, Chris, I don't know what uh, road you go down to Molesu to see the family. But if you're going through Routes 4 and Malolo, you'll notice that uh, there we're uh, fixing. Looks good. Um, you're talking about the going, of, uh, going up the hill. Uh, and uh, Right. I know what you're, you're talking about after Wolford. You do the blind curve, yes. the bamboo. The, yeah, Wolford, it looks really good. All the way down right. to uh, just uh, the in front of the Carmelites, the old Carmelites in 76. Looks good. That's being done right now. Um, and then uh, we will continue with uh, more projects planned uh, on the roads. And then um, in a couple weeks, I'll be pushing out... Um, and we're just doing the final NEPA stuff, but there's going to be a big uh, investment in a bunch of the parks and recreational areas that are going through the environmental review right now that 
I think would be uh, are going to be welcomed by uh, people. LT, by can, our local people. Can we talk a little bit about uh, John Birch? Because uh, you know Friday he was on here for a public uh, crucifixion, and then we um, <laughs> heard that he had gone over to he was moved from the DPR to ancestral lands. But someone had asked about uh, about it uh, yesterday in the uh, press conference, and uh, the governor said no, it had nothing to do with uh, his handling of the homeless. In fact, she praised. Um, how he was helping the homeless. So I guess just what's your take on it? Is there anything we're missing here? Well, I think that uh, right now we need him to move to the Ancestral Lands Commission where our director there is um, put out his uh, retirement. And that is another critical area that uh, is uh, that needs to be handled. But uh, I'm confident that we'll get, we'll get the parks cleaned up. And then on the homeless problem, uh, Last week when I told you, I don't know if you could hear my exasperation or maybe I, my muted exasperation, but I'm very I'm much more confident that we're going to be able to finally get through um, and uh, push some options uh, online for homelessness. And the last week I've been spending a lot of time with um, the leadership at Catholic Social Services, with Public Works. Um, Chief Procurement Officer has come up to talk to me about options try to make sure that we are not victim to um, landowners price gouging. There's been some of that going on, it looks like. Um, but, you know, the need that the, that, um, the folks that are operating the shelter tell me are, number one, that for the night there are a bunch of homeless that are, um, that are just looking for a place to sleep at night. They're not looking to move into somewhere. There's also emergency shelter for a lot of those people featured in some of the news stories. Um, and then, uh, and then the big one is transitional housing. So all three fronts, uh, we're working to, uh, try, I think that we'll be able to, um, I'm very hopeful and confident that, uh, we'll be able to get the facilities for the vets for the night and the emergency shelter awarded, uh, in the next few days, hopefully by the weekend. And then transitional housing is a bit longer, but there's a path. And so, uh, either today or tomorrow, we're going to be, the governor and I will be uh, signing an executive order. Uh, one of the things, uh, and that executive order is um, uh, an affirmative mandate for the government to provide shelter. Uh, number two, uh, we are reactivating um, the interagency council on homelessness that Governor Camacho created about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, the reason we're doing this is it's, um, there has that, there are a lot of agencies out there that have maybe a, a uh, some skin in the game, but nobody is dominantly the main coordinator. Right. Uh, and, uh, and to solve that, we're working with the mayor's council because they they understand what's going on in the villages to respond with uh, a very focus uh, a very focused um, response. And we're kind of nego- we're ironing all of the plans out on that. But I'm I'm. I'm, the, I tell you this week, I feel good that we're going to finally get to it and uh, get a pathway done for this a very complicated issue. LT, what's your take on this? Uh, uh, the airmen, you know, uh, got so many positive cases, finding out that they defied the orders. Because I'm thinking that we've really built up uh, this relationship you guys have with uh, the military, at least the Navy. I'm not sure, you know, how close you guys are with the Air Force, but just what, what this well, could. What's your take on it? That there, there was, it, there's obviously showed that there seems there was a gap here that um, that that needed to be a protocol that was not followed, uh, and the Navy posture since the Roosevelt came and what they had been doing, but they were uh, an excellent partner, and I think that uh, what happened here is that uh, we found out that you know there was a gap that. Part of it is because of the nature, I guess, of these rotational forces coming in. But I, I could tell you that um, the military brass going into Hawaii and D.C. are not very happy with this situation. It really has uh, gone counter to a lot of the goodwill that was uh, built with uh, the Navy because of the TR and, mm-hmm. uh, and then the partnership that uh, resulted from it, including the placement of assets. Uh, so I would say that um, I think that the general and the admiral that came out 
with the governor to talk about the situation and all of the eyes that are on, I would expect that um, each of those service members that violated the quarantine would be are going to be held accountable in the uniform code of military um, justice. Do you, do you know how many uh, have violated that pro protocol or a rough estimate? I don't know yet. Uh, I know that there's two tracks, so on the disciplinary front, that's something that the military is looking at. Right now, public health is really concerned about the contact tracing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so taking a look at um, uh, having a separate group that uh, these service members uh, should be truthful about, all their contacts and uh, the government making sure that they reach all of these places and uh, provide opportunities for employees or members of the public uh, to be tested. That's the big priority right now, and that's something that um, we're very much concerned about. That's the focus of, uh, of um, the work we've been doing over the, over the last few days. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that, uh, you know, the, if, I understand that, um, that these folks, um, you know, they'll, I really am, I believe that they'll be held accountable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll make sure that the military keeps us surprised of those efforts. Mm -hmm. I heard that Admiral Minoni chewed out uh, General Boswell over this. Because, uh, like you said, they, wor they work so you, hard. So I can mm -hmm. listen to that, too. Right. Uh, <laughs> let us know if there's audio. I would expect, I would expect uh, that, obviously, you know, people want to understand uh, why uh, this uh, situation is happening. Right. You know, the, the speaker was on the show yesterday and she was saying that this is basically uh, unacceptable uh, that she's written to the attorney general's office and, and wanting to see uh, these officers held or these airmen um, held accountable for uh, violating, uh, I think she said, 10 GCA chapter 19. <laughs> She went into the GCA. Yeah, she went, she went there. And I'm pretty sure a lot of that is like, let me just make noise because it's convenient right now. Well, you know, I think the ultimate punishment is going to be with the military. Right. People yeah. are, uh, you know, Sabrina, because you're, you know, you uh, mm -hmm. have a lot of relatives in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be career ending and it uh, could, it might be career ending for some of these folks that uh, if they have established that uh, they violated. Um, I would think that it could be career ended. That's probably the ultimate uh, punishment that an uh, individual could uh, face. Yeah. Uh, if they're going to, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, people violating quarantine, um, they would be based on quarantine orders. And, you know, I mean, the lawyers have to look at that. Mm -hmm. But I would think that hopefully the, the speaker's letter that should get the attention over there at the AG's office right. and they'll find a path. But I would just tell you that I imagine that the military punishment is going to be swifter and harsher. Right, right. I, I want to just go back into uh, the cleanup for this weekend. Uh, you guys still need uh, volunteers? Or you, you guys need we do. Mm -hmm. We do. And uh, if any uh, individuals or uh, businesses uh, or uh, nonprofit organizations want to um, get an assignment, uh, feel free to contact uh, my office at 475 nine three eight zero uh, or GVB there's also an online portal that uh, kind of shows all of the different areas on the island uh, but yes we make sure you bring your mask uh, and if uh, you're feeling sick stay home uh, don't come out uh, but bring your mask uh, bring some gloves uh, we'll have some uh, trash bags if you have your own bring them um, but you know come out and um, make sure that you are you could we can still this do this activity and practice a lot of precautions right. you know mm -hmm. mitigate uh, uh and try and protect yourself as we do this but i'm very confident that we'll be able to uh, have a good response and um and uh, gain some time that we lost mm -hmm. over the crisis y you know this is something that i had asked uh, john birch we we have this massive cleanup of all the public parks but what what happens next? Do we have uh, maintenance contracts uh, in place for the restrooms? Uh, for well, uh, for the restrooms, uh, they do have maintenance contracts. Some of these restrooms, uh, uh, by the way, uh, have just been awarded. Uh, there are companies that have been awarded uh, through a, through uh, Public Works to uh, repair restrooms. 
there's a whole bunch of lists and maybe uh, after we clear this event mm -hmm. um, we'll I'll, uh, I'll start releasing uh, you know some of its locations but uh, the idea is to get them to a good level sometimes when they make the repairs you know you can't you need to get commercial materials that last longer than things that we would have in our bathrooms but parts maintenance has been a long-standing problem mm -hmm. uh, part of it is um, you know uh, driven by staff and resources but uh, we've been working with uh, public works to basically reinforce and support what's going on at parks and rec and uh, we're working on developing a more sustainable approach to how we do this mm -hmm. and, and so part of these contracts is it going to be uh, more stepped up sanitization cleaning cleaning like from so for the, different from for the way the, it was pre-COVID. So there's so there's a contract I just talked about where uh, to uh, our construction contracts, uh, and what you wanted to find out are about the parks contracts, right? For maintenance. Yeah. Do you really have a scope of work? Um, you know, I think uh, some of the issue has been that um, the scope of work called for. You know, there needs to be additional or more. Um, uh, frequently in more frequency to the cleaning some of them some bathrooms based on their frequency require uh, and have a uh, on-site attendant at all times right. uh, for example that should be the case or that will be the case down at in Arahan pool also Paseo there's several ones that require that amount that just a non-stop frequency based on the number of people That's but i think it's a definite good time to refresh and reprioritize the big challenge for parks and rec is going to be uh in the upcoming budget is this you know a lot of their operation is subsidized by the tourist attraction fund right. which mm -hmm. is in a different state and so that's going to be something that is that we have to hash out with uh, the legislature and ways and means committee lt just going back to the uh positive uh airmen who defied direct orders uh and jeopardize our community are you are you satisfied that uh, public health in terms of the investigation it's been 10 days uh we still don't know where these guys went uh people of guam are kind of anxious about this you know wanting to know answers do you think that's uh, acceptable or do we need to kind of step it up or is it something that's being hampered uh by having to deal with the military um you know what i i'll maybe i'll take a look at that with that tent when we um speak with them today uh, as I understand it, uh, the people that um, are in charge of the contact tracing and interviews um, ha are finally getting to interview them. So there might there is a few days I think that um, that uh, they could have been in there a bit faster. Uh, I think it's probably resulting from um, you know people on the military side right. not expecting to see this amount of. Um, of uh, spread in a unit. I mean, I have to say that, remember that, you know, even um, General Boswell up there, um, you know, th this group is a, it's a transitory group. And what it tells me is that, you know, when you have different visiting units and their commanding officers are elsewhere, sometimes you see some of these problems. And I think that um, everything I've been hearing about has been um, the admiral pressuring uh, the rest of the military to make sure that there is no gap and that no matter what, any service member coming into town needs to play by the rules. LT, any, uh, we got a tip here. Bobby Alvarez, the new airport executive manager. Any, any truth to that? Uh, no truth to that, that I believe. Nope, I don't think that's in the cards for Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, that is not yeah. to be offensive, but that's that's not something that uh, I don't think he's aspired to. So we'll let the airport make their announcements, guys. Okay. All right. You know, I had a short list here, LT, of suggestions if you want, but I'll text you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can tell me later. Yeah, the last four are funnier than Bobby. I have for you next Tuesday. I, uh, I want to try and I'll give you a week's notice. I want to come up in studio with you guys. Ooh, all right. Oh, wow. Sounds good. You're bringing food? <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to be coming from the south, so yeah, I can. There you go. I'll tell you where to get the good empanada. <laughs> oh, I already know. Okay, Maybe good. Maybe we might have to debate about it, but because <laughs> uh, there's a lot of different pockets. But one of right. them I know is in Santa Rita. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We had that one yesterday. Oh, no, it's very good. Yeah. Uh, by, and uh, don't forget the 
Pop's Bakery down in Agate. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I will get up early and I will make sure that you guys can enjoy the the delicacies of the South up north in your studios. Hey, right. Thank you, LT. And you be safe. Have wash your hands. Day. All right, okay. take care. Forward to speaking with you again, and okay. thanks again for getting the word out to the people. All right, we'll see you at the press conference. All right, bye bye. <laughs> okay, wash your hands. Eight thirty four. Lieutenant Governor Guam, uh, Josh Denorio. Yes, Jason. Okay, and just to follow up on it, you know, we were talking about that thing, and I was like, you know, the number that really stuck out to me was a uh, hundred three samples. I was like, kind of like abnormally large. Yeah. Our friends at Alu actually said they're they're like, yeah, that was uh, that was the reef testing. That was the reef testing. Yeah, so well, uh, over 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 seventy of those one hundred three samples were reef staffers. That, right. Yeah. Okay. So, thanks, Jason Salas. Everybody, he's here too. Uh, we're gonna take a short break, <laughs> and we got Superintendent John Fernandez. Uh, coming up on Containing COVID, it's the KUAM News Takeover, Guam's favorite. Good morning. Keeping you informed, KUAM News brings you Banking 671, brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, and Coast 360 Federal Credit Union.